name of Jesus. Tonight, listen, I'll be ministering on here. Saints, get your notepad out. Get your notepad out because I'm going to be ministering on here and it's going to be very powerful what I'm talking about. Now, Saints, of course, the next Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference is going to be in San Diego, California. And the details will be coming up. It will be in 2019. I'm scheduled to be at some things before this year is over. Mm. I'll clarify whether I'll be there or not. Holy Spirit is going to be doing amazing things. And since this next wave of the fire and the power of God is going to be massive and great. And great. And saints, I'm telling you, those of you all, if you don't have prophetic mysteries uncovered completely, make sure you get the book. If you don't have increasing your anointing as a virtuous woman, get the book. These books are very powerful. They're very massive. And it will change your life. Now, saints, I'm telling you, what the Lord is about to do with your life is going to be very powerful. Very powerful. Very powerful. And it will require you to pray in the spirit, it will require you to praise God more. It will require you 
to not be in connection with certain people that you're in connection with today. There'll be a breaking away. And it's going to happen. Because you love God and you're not going to stop him. And saints, I'm telling you, those of you all that are, are uh, those of you all that have come to the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference in Texas earlier this year, and the Holy Spirit, Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, the power of the Lord is very strong. And as he's increasing on this ministry, you are going to take on a different encounter with Jesus, a different functionality. Now, saints, I realized that the Lord had made me different when I could surrender to him in moments that I saw people would ignore. Because there's moments when we talk about the portals that you have a portal over your life and you can close that portal if you are not surrendered. God can open up a portal over you and if you're not surrendered, it can close. It can close. And this has happened to so many people where they were about to step into a greater anointing and then they stopped. If we look at the story of Elijah, he was about to step into a great anointing and he stopped right before he could get there. When he was about to step into a great anointing, he stopped. He could have kept going. The power of God was already very strong. And the Holy Spirit was already doing something massive in his life. He could have kept going and stepped into another degree of power. Because we saw God had already moved Elijah into the fire, falling. That's the fire of God on his ministry. We see that he moved Elijah into, into, consuming the prophets of Baal. We see that God moved his ministry into the degree of the glory of God. So Elijah was going higher and higher and higher. When he prayed to die, he stopped at that level. Now, this is what you want to see. A lot of times there were people that went before you that stopped at a certain level with God and God is calling you to go greater than them. You have to be careful that you don't stop. You have to be careful that you don't let yourself reach a certain level and then shut down. You're going to have to be bold. Saints, I don't care what people say about me. Number one, I know that everybody that has the Holy Spirit if they have the Holy Spirit, they will know the truth. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, I don't care what they know. Because <laughs> they don't even know where they're going to spend eternity. You have to get this revelation if you are going to step into the next dimension of power and glory from God. Because there is a realm where the Holy Spirit he takes over your body, your mind, your functionality, and all of you becomes possessed by him. He don't just operate through you. He operates as you. Where you go, he go. He's going. Where, what you say, he's saying. He's taking over your mouth. Remember, Jesus said it will be the spirit of your father speaking in you. Don't think about what you shall say or what you shall do, but it is the spirit of your father that speaks inside of you. 
Now, saints, what was Elisha doing when he asked God to give him a double portion of Elijah's spirit? When God sends a prophet to you, you can receive a transfer of that prophet's spirit. God has given the prophet the authority to impart his spirit to believers, to those that are connected to him. God has given the prophet the power, the authority to release his spirit the same way the Lord releases his spirit to the people that are receiving from him. This is why when someone is underneath a prophet, you'll see them start acting like that prophet, talking like that prophet, uh, even looking like that prophet. You'll even start seeing them actually look like the prophet. Why does this happen? Because the spirit of the prophet is transferable. This is why when Elisha heard Elijah say, what do you want me to do for you? He said, give me a double portion of your spirit. Now, receiving the spirit of the prophet means that you're going to see stronger. You're going to hear stronger. You're going to have a greater ministry of angels around you. You're going to be able to command things, demand things. You're going to be able to uh, release the power of God in your atmosphere. Uh, you'll be able to defeat witchcraft. You'll be able to cancel word curses spoken over you. Because saints, you don't know sometimes, even if you wake up at night or you have a sleepless night, sometimes it's not always got something to do with you or what you... Sometimes there's somebody that's speaking against your success. There's somebody that's speaking against your prosperity. They're speaking against your deliverance. They're speaking against your promotion. And God is letting you know that there is something taking place. And you got to deal with it in the spirit. Now, let me just tell you this. I know because when you're in ministry, you have a lot of people try to curse you. You have a lot of people try to do different type of stuff, but I learned how to shut them down in the spirit, not in the flesh. We don't deal with flesh. We go into the spirit realm and we find out where the witch is. We find out where the sorcerer is, where the root problem is. Oftentimes I've been up and God would take me places. I'll see certain things. I'll see certain ceremonies. And the Lord will have me speak a word over it to stop it, to cut it off. You have to understand that when Jesus cursed the fig tree, he did not do it on the earth. Here's the powerful thing about this. He went into the spirit realm to curse the fig tree. Now, here's the powerful thing about this. The fig tree was in the natural but Jesus went in the spirit to stop what was operating in the natural. This is the powerful thing about this. The fig tree was physical. It was natural. It was visible in this earth realm. But Jesus went in the spirit realm to cut off its function in the earth realm. This is why you have to learn the spirit realm more than this natural realm. This natural realm is going to pass away. The earth is going to pass away. The Bible said only those that do the will of God shall remain. This earth is going to pass away. It's the spirit realm that Jesus stepped into to curse the fig tree. He went into debt with the spiritual implication of why this fig tree was in rebellion, why this fig tree was in disobedience, and it was witchcraft. Because remember, witchcraft is as the sin of rebellion.
or rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, rather. That's 1 Samuel 15, 23. So he curses the fig tree. And when he curses the fig tree, he's in the spirit realm and he's speaking against satanic activity that is working through this fig. Because this, watch this, this fig did not please Jesus. And the Bible said, no man can please God in the flesh. So here's this. This fig tree was in the flesh realm, which is the satanic realm, which is the realm where demons operate. So Jesus could not be pleased because you cannot please God in the flesh. So Jesus went in the spirit and curse what was happening in the flesh. You can do that as well. You can go in the spirit and cancel what's happening in your flesh, even sickness wise. You can go in the spirit and cancel what's happening in your flesh, sickness wise. You don't just get sick in your body. You don't just get sick in your soul because there's a soul sickness. There's a sickness that happens to your soul. Where your mind, will, and emotions are affected. They're wounded. You go into the spirit realm and you deal with it there and you release the power of God for you to recover all, whether it be mental recovery, whether it be physical recovery, whether it be financial recovery. You have the right to go into the spirit realm and decree the word of God concerning what's bothering you and receive the manifestation of it wherever you need it. A lot of people are waiting for God to work miracles and God anointed you as a miracle worker. A lot of people are waiting for God to cast out a devil and God anointed you as the devil worst nightmare. Jesus did not die for us just to pit the responsibility on him. He already did his part. Jesus died so that we could get a revelation that he pit his ability on us. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are the body of Christ. Your physical body, your hands are his hands. Your feet are his feet. Your eyes are his eyes. When you surrender, you literally see like him. You literally hear like him. You literally walk like him. You literally act like him. But when you surrender, it's already your right. It's already a door. It's already accessible to you. But when you surrender, it's not available. It's not going to manifest for everybody. Though it is available for everybody. Jesus died so that you can get the revelation of his ability on you. You supposed to be decreeing miracles. You supposed to be speaking the word of God. You supposed to be doing what Jesus did when he was on the earth, which is the Bible said he lifted up the five loaves and two fish, gave thanks to God, blessed it, multiplied it, gave it to the people. Do you know that that process has been imparted to you for you to fulfill as well? You give thanks unto the Lord. You bless the Lord. You bless whatever the Lord has given you. You command it to multiply with the blessing and it shall multiply and supply whatever needs to be supplied in your life. Do you know that you have that same light power and glory and grace given to you by God? What the Holy Spirit did was he made you a carrier of the same glory and power. 
He made you a carrier of the same ministry of Jesus for you to speak like Jesus concerning every matter in your life that needs to be changed. Say this, I choose to go into the spirit realm of Jesus for the rest of my life. Say this. I choose to go in the spirit realm of Jesus for the rest of my life. Don't deal with this life in the flesh because you'll stay broke financially. Don't deal with this life in the flesh because you'll stay broke mentally. You'll stay broke emotionally. You're... And watch this. When Satan breaks you emotionally and mentally, you are a slave to people that have come to destroy you. You are a slave to people that do not have the right intention towards you. And you have to be their slave. You have to be a slave to uh, relationships. Huh? Ain't that crazy? You don't want to be a slave to Satan. Here's the powerful thing about this. Because whenever your soul is broken, you are a victim. You search for acceptance. You search for people to like you because your soul has been broken. You search for who gives you the most encouragement at the time, even if they pity you out of the will of God. You understand this? Pity you out of the will of God. Do you know what I mean? That I'm encouraging you, but I'm encouraging you in rebellion. I, I'm telling you everything that you want to hear, but it's not the word of the Lord. I, listen, watch. I have become the 400 prophets to king, the king of Israel, Ahab. And I'm telling the king of Israel, Ahab, what he wants to hear. I'm not telling him the word of God. I, I, and watch, I'm leading him into rebellion because I'm telling him to go up and he shall take the land. I'm telling him, go up and you shall, the Lord shall give you victory. I'm lying to him and it sounds good. It sounds caring. It sounds loving, but really it is the deceitfulness of Satan. The Bible said the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things, meaning that your heart would lead you into things that seem if right to a man, but the end thereof is death. That's Proverbs. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. How could it seem right, but it lead to death? Because it was sin all along. Satan just packaged it in a way that you wouldn't catch it. And then when it destroys your joy, it destroys your peace, it destroys your finances. Then you get quickened and say, uh oh, that wasn't. Do you know what the Bible said? What does it profit a man to gain the world? Do you know what that means? What does it profit a person to entertain, win the approval of people? What does it profit you for you to serve your feelings? What does it profit you to serve your intellect? What does it profit you to serve your offenses? What offends you? You serve in it. You give in place to it. If it makes you offended, what does it profit you to enjoy the path that God never had for your life? It say you're going to lose your soul. That's your mind, will, and emotions. So here's the thing. If I gain the world, that means that I'm operating in my mind, will, and emotions, and I'm using all of these characteristics that I receive for God for Satan. I'm investing in it 
I'm, I'm investing all of my God qualities into Satan. Imagine this. You taking your virtue and investing your virtue into Satan. You taking your, your dominion and you using that dominion to be subject to Satan. You have a mantle in your mouth and you're supposed to be speaking things into your atmosphere daily. You're supposed to talk things into your atmosphere. And watch. It's your job to get the angels to move into their job. Watch. You're not always broke. Because you're not sowing. Sometimes you broke because you're not saying. Because watch this. I can sow and still not be in faith. If I give God $3 and I make $3,000 a month, I have sold, but I have not released any faith. There's nothing that will move me into a next financial level because it's not even moving me. Watch this, saints. If your sowing don't make you say, wow, don't think God doing that. If your praise don't make you say, wow, don't think God doing that. If your obedience don't make you say, wow, don't think that God is saying, wow. If you feel like you ain't even. Don't think for one minute God up there. Hip hop, hip hop parade. Oh. It's not even moving you. How much more. The king of royalty. What you doing not even moving you. You had to release no faith to do it. The Bible said without faith is impossible to please God. Bible said God dealt to every man the measure of faith. So if every man has faith, why would the Bible tell me without faith? Wait a minute. That would be contradicting, right? Because it just said that God dealt to every man the measure of faith, Romans chapter 12. Then it said without faith is impossible to please God, Hebrews so how is Romans 12 and Hebrews 11, how are they in relationship together? Because isn't it contradicting? It says that he dealt to every man a measure of faith. And then it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. How could I be without faith when he gave it to me? If you take a note, write this down. Disobedience is equivalent to absent faith. I want you to write this down. Disobedience is equivalent to absent faith. So watch this. If you disobey God, if you live in your own life doing your own thing, the disobedience is equivalent to absent faith. So in your disobedience, you are underneath the category of no faith. In disobedience, you're underneath the department of no faith. So in the line and the category that you are in, 
is that the Lord has placed you in a category of no faith. So even though he dealt to every man, the Bible said every man, it didn't say many men, wish death upon me, blood in my eye. Listen, man, some of y'all got 50 cents in your pockets right now. You know, jingalang, jingalang. Saints, you, you meet a good hustler, they don't even ask you for a dollar. Let me hold, let me hold four quarters. Make you think about it. You be like, wait, what, 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 four quarters? How much is that? <laughs> you be up there counting, they, they, they hit you with that quickness. <laughs> they they don't even they listen. They don't ask you for two dollars. Let me let me hold eight quarters in a nickel. <laughs> you be left to guess, and you find yourself scraping for quarters and nickels. You don't know that they just asked you for two dollars and five cent. I was at a gas station the other day. Brother going walk up to me. Talks, hey man, hey man. I got to have to backed up. I thought my windows was tinted. Obviously, it's not tinted enough. <laughs> they said, if you tint your windows too dark, they're going to arrest you. Well, they're going to have to do something with me because I'm going to tint my windows extremely dark. Like Dark Vader. You can't go to, you can't, you got to go to the, a white people gas station, then you be at peace. You go to a black people gas station, everybody always coming out the, oh, 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 hey, oh, oh, you got a lot, you got a lot of, hey, hey, oh, 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 you got a lot of, nah, man, I ain't got no lot of, man. Why well, always gotta have a lot of, man? Do you all right? You all right with yours? Always gotta come and ask for a lot, oh, 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 bro. Bro, 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 hey, bro, hey, man, my name ain't bro. Me and you don't even look alike. You, you bald headed. I got hair on mine. What, what's going on here? You look like DMX, man. I look like man. Come on. I look like man. Come on. Now we couldn't even be brothers. You broke. I got some money, man. Your, your hand is ashy. Look at between the crack of your hand. You got ash all, ash stains. Man, you got ash stains all over, all over the crack of your hands. You got ash stains from when you was a little child. Who raised you? You know it's real. Got ash stains right there between the crack of their hands. Look like they was picking up sand like this. And eating it. <laughs> Never trust an ashy hand. <laughs> Some of y'all asking for lotion right now. You're not really with no woman until you get into public and they ask you for some lotion for their hands. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> you be in public out there about to pray. Hallelujah. You got some lotion? Lotion. One time I heard my one of my sons ask for lotion for his hand. I was like, ah, oh, Lord, no, oh, Jesus. <laughs> one of my sons, done, listen, who done affected you? No, nah, don't ask for no lotion for your hand. <laughs> and y'all never know who I'm talking about. You'll never know who I'm talking about. <laughs> no, not you too. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoot. You know it's real when you when you around white people and they ask for lotion. They be like, you got lotion for your hands? They be like, hey, y'all do this too? <laughs> hey, what? Hey, listen, wait a minute. Y'all get down with the get down to y'all, y'all. Listen, y'all part of lotion on your hands, club. <laughs> hey, hey y'all got that lotion on your hands? Don't, just don't let nobody come out that's single and know about no lotion on no hands now. Just leave that alone. Don't think about it. 
Hey, you got a lighter, you got a lighter. Don't think about it. In page 36 of my book, page 36 of my book, it says, and this is increasing, increasing your anointing as a virtuous woman. Look at this, saints. It says, storms can stop the weapons God gave you. Or the weapons God gave you can stop the storms. This is page 36. It's over 240, 40, 50 plus pages of wisdom, impartation, prophetic secrets for women that are queens, that are anointed by the Holy Spirit and power to be different. Storms can stop the weapons God gave you or the weapons God gave you can stop the storms. This is so powerful, saints. Do you know that a storm is sent? To defeat the God nature on the inside of you. A storm is sent. So that you'll never discover what God is thinking towards you, what he placed within you, and what he's scheduled to come to you or happen for you. A storm can stop the weapons that God gave you. Do you know that in a storm, it, a storm can produce all timers? In the spirit. Or, or let, let me say it like this. Storms can produce all timers about. Things pertaining to the spirit. Do you know that storms come to give you all timers of everything that God has taught you? To remove the effectiveness of his words. To remove the zeal and the passion of his promise from your soul. You ever seen somebody overly excited and you see them, they all weary, they tired, they upset, they frustrated, they threw, they threw. They couldn't even afford the, the H-R-O-U-G-H, they threw. Why are they through? Because they are in a storm and the storm has become their God. My God. Here's the crazy thing. When you're following God in a storm, don't follow the storm as if it's God. Oh, my God. I just, that statement just came to me just now. I want some of y'all to write that down. That's a fresh statement. It's not in my book. It just came to me as I'm talking to you. When you're following God in the storm, don't follow the storm as if it's God. When you're following God in the storm, do not follow the storm as if it's God. This is what so many people do. You follow your storm as if it's God and it has the final say about your emotions. It has the final say about your joy. It has the final say about your zeal. It has the final say about your loyalty. It has the final say about whether you're going to praise God, whether you're going to be grateful. Have you taken the time to look at where you are? I don't care if you're in a homeless shelter. I don't care if you're on a hospital bed. The fact that you are alive and you can be able to repent and you can be able to call on the name of the Lord. You got enough for you to look around and say, thank you, King Jesus, because there's people right now that wish that they had a body. They had something. 
that you have right now. Do you know how many people that are in hell right now watching me as I'm preaching right now? They can see me. You know how many of them was called to do what I'm doing right now? You know how many of them were created to do what you're doing right now? Even being on this line, but it was taken out because of wrong decisions, wrong company, wrong thoughts, wrong memory, wrong imaginations, wrong addictions, wrong habits, wrong, wrong, wrong. And you got time, saints, as a, as a king of wisdom, as a king of wisdom. I often find myself analyzing life like Jehovah God himself. And I look and I think about it 24 hours in a day. Seven days a week. What are people producing with their life? And watch some of y'all think that I mean materialistic substance. Listen, all that will fade eventually. I'm talking about, are you investing all of you into the things of God? There are people that are always in the earth 24-7. And they say, I'm trying to find out what the Lord is saying to me. You got 24 hours in the day. You got seven days in the week. You got a prayer language. You got a praise language. You got a love language. You have a wisdom language. Where God communicates with you at an advanced level. How you solutions is the easiest side of wisdom. Solutions. When wisdom comes, solutions is the easiest side. So, so you're going to have solutions. God is going to show you how to solve the problems in your life that seem like it cannot be solved. God is going to show you how to fix things that seem like it's permanently broken. Uh, wisdom rewards patient vessels. Wisdom rewards patient vessels. When you're patient, it means that you have submitted yourself to the timing of God. So it's not hard for you to hear from him because guess what? You're telling him whenever you choose to speak to me, I'll just be ready to listen. So if I'm patient, I, I, am, a, I am in a guaranteed position for wisdom. That's why the Bible said, do not be anxious for nothing, because a lot of times it's your storm that's making you make decisions. You making decisions because of the storm, not because you heard God say it, not because you heard the spirit of the Lord say it. You do it because you don't like the pressure you feel. You don't like the discomfort you feel. You don't like the opposition you feel. Do you know that you have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb on the inside of you? A different spirit. You shall surely go up and conquer the giants in the land. Have you ever seen prophet Joshua Holmes retreat from anybody? A million demons couldn't stop me. 
<laughs> a million demons plus a whole legion of demons could not even stop my voice. How come all of their prayers won't work? How come? How come the prayer of witches and warlocks can't work? Why isn't their ceremonies effective? They said God was going to strike me with sickness. Why am I sick? Ah, why am I not dead? Why is that working? Because it's God on the inside of me. It's God on the inside of me. <laughs> uh, if I go down, he go down and he'll never go down. He's God above all. You can't be stopped when Jesus on the inside of you. You can't be stopped when the power of the living God is inside of your being. When the spirit of God is on the inside of you, you got the resurrection and the power. That power can't be stopped by wickedness. The Bible said don't be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. Do you know what that means? That there's nothing that Satan and his spirits and his children can do that can override somebody that God lives inside of. Feel the power. They can't stop you from living big. They can't stop you from possessing the land. They can't stop you from having what God says. Yours. The devil can't stop you from having joy. He can't stop you from having pot. He can't stop you from having wealth. He can't stop you from having health. He can't stop you. You got the power. You going to decide what's happening up in here. You going to decide what's happening. This your life. You're going to decide to let the word of God manifest. The power of God manifest. The, the presence of God manifest. The angels of God manifest. Angels ministering for you. Angels do their work. Angels do their work. Angels do their work. On this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There's no demonic power that can prevail against you. You got the power of the Holy Spirit. You decree a thing and it be established. You set your atmosphere. You command those things that be not. You call it in. That be not as though they were. You do it. You do it. That apostolic glory on you. You got apostolic power over money. Apostolic power over your health. Apostolic power over demons. Apostolic power over your mind. Apostolic power. You got the power to, to, to break, to bind, and, 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 and to, to shatter Satan in his kingdom. You better use it. You better use it. You're not no victim. You ain't got no time to be feeling bad for yourself. You got a land to take over. You got territory to possess. You got demons to destroy. You got spirits to defeat. You got challenges to abolish. You got debt to destroy. You got sickness to heal. You got death to resurrect. The power of God on the inside of you. You got the power to speak things. You got the power to do things. You got the power to be like Jesus in the earth. Don't let the devil strip you of your right. Don't let him strip you of your mind. Don't let him strip you of your joy. Don't let him strip you of your peace. Something about to happen. Something about to happen. God going to do it for you. He going to get the glory out your life. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You just got to stay in the race. Stay in the grace. And stay in his face. 
Ha, oh my God, Papa, Papa. You listen, you, 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 you're not gonna be fulfilling the same failure of people that have gone before you. They fell to the demon. They fell to the spirit. You got a, a, a spirit of boldness placed upon your life to go where they did not go. To say what they did not, what? To say what they did not say. To accomplish what they did not accomplish. You going higher. You coming for the devil head. Mark Haranto said, we're not waiting for no devil to fight us. We're going to fight him. Let, and let's see who's going to win. Mark Harapa I've been in fights with Satan. I ain't lose yet. I ain't never going to lose. <laughs> Mark Haranto Koramoko Repeki. Repeki. You better use that authority of God on the inside of you and stop letting the snake come into your garden. Let stop letting the snake tread upon your mind. Stop letting the snake have conversations with you while you sleep and send you demonic dreams. Send you stuff that God don't want you to even ponder upon because he can't access you most times in the day. He come to you in the nighttime. Give you dreams. Dreams that are not even from the Lord is a serpent demon, is a scorpion demon giving you dreams. You think because you prophetic that the dream come from God. If Satan can't have you while you awake, he's sure going to aim for you while you're sleeping. Don't forget that statement. If he can't have you while you awake, he's sure going to try to get you while you sleeping. We bust that crackhead in his head tonight in Jesus name. We bust that crackhead in his head tonight. Every spirit of witchcraft hovering over your mind, your soul, your body in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. In the name of Jesus, I break every serpent and scorpion and all the powers of the enemy that is functioning against you right now. In the name of Jesus, go. You got to understand the trickery of a serpent. A serpent ain't going to stop aiming at you. You just going to have to get bold enough in this life to start aiming at the serpent and say, listen, I ain't waiting for you to fight me. I'm going to fight you before you try to fight me. I'm going to decree the blood before you try to pit an attack on my life. I'm going to decree what I'm going to do before you come on the scene and tell me to turn these stone into bread if I be the son of God. I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. You ain't going to control me and try to convince me. I'm already got my mind made up. The subtlety of Satan. The trickiness, the craftiness. If he can't rule you in the daytime, he's going to try to rule you in the nighttime. If he can't rule you when you're around people that have the anointing, he's going to try to rule you when you're by yourself. You better be on guard 24-7. The Bible said pray without ceasing. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. Do you know what temptation mean? Meaning if you are not watchful and you're not in a communication with God all the time, you're going to end up contemplating stuff, thinking stuff. There are going to be wrong imaginations that flood your mind because you don't have your gates up. So the gates of Satan can prevail against you in that state. Don't play with the enemy. Everything that you hear, everything that you feel is not from God. Not because you're prophetic. Everything that comes to you is not from God. Even I know that. 
I've been in places, times, people say, oh, this is God. This is God. I said, the Lord said it's not him. It's not? No. You didn't take the time to even find out from him if it was him. You just made your own decision. Your, your decision making is flawed without divine patience. Write that down. Your decision making is flawed without divine patience. What we have so many people with flawed decision making. Watch, watch, watch. Look what happened to the young prophet. God tell him don't eat and drink in the place. He don't listen to God in Kings chapter 13. He listens to this false prophet come lie to him, tell him a lie. Said the angel of the Lord showed up and told me to tell you come to my house. Do you know why God let him die by a lion eating him up? The lion represented Satan who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> so when the lion ate him up, that was an embarrassing thing because what happens is he's a prophet and he's supposed to be prophetic, but he gets deceived. He didn't have divine patience. What if he would have waited a little longer and said, wait a minute. He telling me that the Lord said that the angel of the Lord came to him and told him to get me to come to his house and eat. But what did the Lord tell me? I'm still in the place where God told me not to eat or drink. So why would I go to the house with him and eat and drink when God clearly told me that when I get to the place that I'm currently in right now, do not eat or drink. Don't go out the same way I came in. What if he would have waited a little longer? Divine patience would have revealed to him because divine patience leads to discernment. Divine patience is the connector, is the connection to discerning a wrong voice. Divine patience is a connector, is a connection to discerning a wrong voice, wrong counsel. You notice even in Jesus' life, he moved in divine patience. He didn't just do things at the drop of a dime. Let me give you an example. I'm, not, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak to me right now. I'm hearing my angels whisper things to me right now. I'm seeing Arrhenius hand me a scroll and in the scroll, I begin to see in this scroll that there is a impartation coming to the people of God in 2019. Those of you all that's connected to my ministry, I want to prophesy this to you because you're going to see me start doing things in the spirit realm that are very profound. I don't want some of you all to lose me and stumble over what I begin to do. You'll begin to see me branch out into different uh, aspects of God functionality. There's an impartation that I'm preparing you all for with all these teachings. Because listen, here's what's happening. It's not just going to be me releasing the fire of God. You will release the fire of God in your city. You will release the fire of God in your state. You will release the fire of God in your nation. This is what I mean by this. I mean that you are going to be a vessel in which God will use you spontaneously. And it's not going to be pressure. Some of you all may think, oh, well, I'm nervous, prophet. I don't, I'm not a really a people person. I'm not talking about you because you, 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 you would be nothing if it's you. 
I'm talking about the baptism of the fire of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about you going to meet random people. They might say, oh, I got a headache. You say, can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, fire in Jesus' name. And, 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 and the headache goes. The headache goes. There's some people I just, I, I don't even have to touch them. There's some people I, I can lay my hands on them and the power of God hit them. I've seen it. Instant miracles. I've seen it. I've seen it. And I'm not talking about years ago. I'm talking about now. I'm in the now move of God. I'm not in the yesterday's move of God. I'm in the now move of God. And I'm moving in it now. Do you know that the torch is being passed in our generation? The torch is being passed in our generation. Our generals that occupied in the former generation, God is weaning them off of their work. He's giving them rest for their labor. And they're coming into a greater place of enjoyment. God is lessening the assignment on their lives so that they can enjoy their older age. With long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. There are certain people that moved in the miracle ministry, but I can tell you for this, <clears throat> that Jesus told me that he is going to use me to carry this move of God in America. He's going to use me along with whoever else he picks. To give America a final chance to repent through his glory. A, a, a final chance for them to bow their knee to his throne through his glory. An opportunity for them to reverence him in a very special way. Through the demonstrations of his spirit and his power. And saints, I'm telling you that the glory is filling the earth. Every meeting that I shall do will be full of miracles. It'll be full of the power of Jesus Christ as it has been. You, you all was in Texas. We prayed for almost everybody inside the building. I don't know if it was everybody or almost everybody. And the power of God was so strong. The building shook in that place. I don't know if some of you all were at Atlanta, Georgia. The same fire of the Holy Spirit at another level. The glory of God at another level. Saints, I'm telling you, there are times where I'm underneath the anointing where I feel like as if God himself is taking me off the earth. And I'm telling you, saints, that same glory is about to touch your life in a mighty way. I'm telling you, saints, that that presence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is going to electrify you. And that electricity of the Holy Spirit is upon your life. Let me tell you something. Those of you all that have I have prayed for you at any of my meetings, I'm hearing the Lord Jesus tell me to tell you that the power that I released on you is still on you. He's telling you afresh this day. That power is on you. Decree things. If you see somebody sick and they come into your path, decree things. Release that power of God. There's a prophet. He's, you know, he's, he's well known on his end. But he wrote me a couple of days ago and said, I'm in revival. And the Lord spoke to me and I told him, I said, I never release who it is because I, I don't want, you know, I'm confidential about people's dignity. 
as the, as I stand before the Lord, I told him, I said, look at the people in their eyes. During this revival, I said, start releasing the power of God on them. You may not never have, have really stepped into that, but watch. Release the power of God on people. Study them. Watch to see who's hungry. When they're hungry, God's power meets their hunger and there's a, there's a boom in the room. But he needs you to see it. You have to see it because you are the eyes of Jesus. You have to see it because you are the hands of Jesus. You have to see it because you are the body of Jesus. And when you get it, he could come through and do what he needs to do. But he needs you to catch it. You got to watch and pray. You think Jesus was underneath some wimpy behind anointing when the garden of Gethsemane tells us that his sweat turned to as drops of blood? Do you know that the Bible said that when all the soldiers came to see Jesus, they said, are you Jesus or should we expect somebody else? Jesus said, I am he and they dropped every single soldier dropped. Every single person that came to arrest Jesus, they fell underneath the power of God. Because Jesus was underneath that strong glory. And when he said, I am he, the same I am he that was in Moses today, the same I am he that appeared to Abraham, the same I am he that stood with Elijah when the fire fell, that stood with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace was the same I am he that was in that garden of Gethsemane. All those soldiers had to bow. They all fell underneath the power of God. Hallelujah. Saints, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit is upon this generation. You've been called by the power of God to demonstrate this kingdom with grace and glory and fire and honor. He going to use you. It don't matter your age. It don't matter what you did. You are in a new dispensation of the spirit of God. I'm telling you, saints, there's nothing that can stop what God is doing. There's nothing that can stop this move of the spirit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you understand That a captain in his 50 began to pursue Elijah. When they stood before Elijah, he calls down fire. There's a realm where you can call down fire. There's a realm where you can call down fire. Elijah found out this realm. There's a reason why the fire of God even has to come. Because it means that you are being empowered by God to destroy the throne of Satan. Because he sets up his thrones in different cities. He sets up his thrones in different states. He sets up his throne in different organizations. And when the Holy Spirit begins to take you into this zone, the devil knows your name. He knows you. He has your picture. He knows where you are. He knows that you have been raised up by Jesus to destroy him. So he will do everything in his power to seemingly destroy you. He'll use accusation. 
He'll use different sabotages. He'll use different distractions, discouragements. He'll use weariness. He'll use fear. He'll use condemnation, intimidation. He'll find all type of things to get you to turn your back on Jesus. And when he sees that you are steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord, he knows that you are a general and a captain called by the Lord to also bring other people into the same like grace, into the same like glory, into the same like fire, into the same like move of the spirit. When he sees that you cannot be shaken, he knows the next side of it is that you're going to shake him. Saints, I come to tell you at the beginning of last year, and the, I think the periscope is still on at Joshua Home 777. I think it's still there. I prophesied to you all. I told you everything that was going to happen, even in this fall. I prophesied long. I didn't just tell you about February. I told you what was going to take place the whole year towards the end of the year. I spoke and told you, hey, do you know God told me there's another attack on my ministry? I said, listen, God told me that though you have seen this, there's another attack going to come because it has to be fulfilled because of the cup I'm drinking. It has to happen. It has to happen. It has to happen. It has to happen. And see, saints, here's the powerful thing. Here's the powerful thing. Once the Lord begins to use you to cross over into the spirit realm, you go against every demonic power that exists. Hear me, hear me. You go against every demonic power that exists. I'm talking about every spirit that is in the satanic kingdom. You oppose that spirit with the fire of God. Saints, do you know that Elijah was opposing the spirits with the fire of God? But what he got to a level that he lost track he got distracted and all of a sudden he said, okay, enough is enough. I'm the only one. There's always 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to bow. There's always 7,000. A lot of times the 7,000 are not on the scene because it's not their time to be on the scene. A lot of times the 7,000 is not uh, visible because it's not their time. They're being trained. They're being disciplined or discipled. It's not their time yet to come on the scene. Now, let me just tell you. There's always one in a generation that God will raise up to be a voice in his kingdom for that generation. They'll proclaim the works of Jesus. They'll declare and they'll demonstrate the works of Jesus to their generation. That person will always have a unusual level of the Holy Spirit on their life that's almost inexplainable. They'll do things that are beyond natural mind. They'll have the nature and the characteristics of Jesus saturating their person. They'll function differently from other ministers. When Apostle Paul came on the scene, 
He even declared, yes, I was chief of sinners. Yes. But Jesus has taught me. He has anointed me. He has given me revelation and wisdom. And he was in his generation. And he had knowledge of the other disciples, but they were not at the level he was on. The Bible said one day he testified, said, I was, I don't know if I was out of the body or in the body, but I went to the third heaven. I was in the third heaven. I, I heard things. I'm not lawful to speak them, to even utter them, to let you know of them. Apostle Paul was under the strong glory of God. The strong fire of God. Le coste petio la man de levos. El cula man te leva capalandi olo coste fele dianta. Raba sor ramandi o remandi o. I remember whether it was earlier this year when Jesus spoke to me. When he visited me, he said, I've given you the ministry of Apostle Paul, Prophet Elijah. He said, if you pit this ministry underneath any man, I'll judge you. I'll judge you on the day of judgment. When you carry the heavy glory of God, there's a greater requirement and demand on you. You have to be okay with being different. You have to be okay with not being a, a puppet for Satan to manipulate and masquerade around your life. You have to be okay with being bold, courageous, focused. And you have to learn who God has made you to be and stay in it. Don't switch because there's no power when you switch. Some of you all, God have let you see who you are when you switch and you don't like it. You know that there's no power. When the enemy switches you, there's no grace. You start wanting to go back to your past. There's no grace. You start wanting to connect with people that God already revealed to you are your enemies. There's no grace. You find yourself trying to link up with people that God don't want in your circle. There's no grace. Saints, Master Kulianto Serevea. Here's what the presence of God did with Moses. He enveloped him. Though he was seen as a man, he functioned as God. He was seen as flesh, but he was in the function of spirit. Here's the mighty thing about Moses. Moses went 40 days, 40 nights, I believe more than once. His function was God. When he came off the mountain and he saw them rebelling against God, he crushed all the tablets right in the presence of God and God did not kill him. Ah, how could you crush what God just made and God don't even retaliate against you? Because God crushed those tablets through Moses. When Moses crushed those tablets, here's the power of God in this. God let him crush 
the tablets because it was a prophecy of what God was going to do in the future. He was going to take the word off of the tablets of stone and put the word on the tablets of our heart. So when he crushed the, the, the stone, it was a portrait to show you what was going to take place, that God was going to be done away with the law. He was going to give us his grace. His ability was going to be on the inside of us. His word was going to be on the inside of us. So he let him break it because that represented the old covenant. When he broke it, when he broke it, it was the same thing. When Jesus began to talk about communion and he broke and said that the bread symbolized him. Because what Jesus was doing was when Moses broke that stone, that was like him breaking Jesus, representative of the crucifixion, that after Jesus be crucified, there will be another system of power. There will be another system of fire. There will be another system of glory. There will be another system of the outpouring of the spirit. There, there will be another system of supernatural wind of the spirit. And Moses was showing us through the demonstration that there was going to be a breaking of the stone. Jesus is called the stone that the builders rejected. A breaking of the stone. So that the glory of God can manifest. Jesus was the stone in the New Testament that was broken. When Moses broke that testament, even back then, when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus let himself become broken by this world, broken by people that hated him, so that the glory of God can be seen. How many of you are caught what I just was talking about. If you caught what I said, I want you to shout Jesus. Did you catch what I just explained here? I just explained to you something very powerful as a mystery. It's very powerful as a mystery. It's very powerful as a mystery. Karebe karomondo koreba Narobo si karando sereve Vere koranto seremande levaya Do you know it's a mystery what I'm teaching you here, saints? This is so powerful. It's so powerful because, saints, what I'm dealing with is the symbolisms. The symbolisms. This is why the Lord was moving through Moses to break the tablets. Because here's another revelation. God has to break us before we can dwell on the mountain. See, Moses was already broken. He was broken through his process. He was broken through his rejection. He was broken through being isolated, through fasting. So when God broke him, he sent him to train the children of Israel on how to be broken.
Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I receive your presence. Let me tell you something, saints. This glory that I'm walking in, that you're walking in, has been reserved for us. This glory is not the same glory that was in days past. This is fresh glory. Remember, God said in the word, Behold, I do a new thing. He said, I'll do a new thing. I'll do a new thing. The new thing is happening. Holy.
the glory of God has been reserved for such a time as this. It's been reserved for this outpouring. It's been reserved for this dispensation. There are angels that are assigned for this move of God and they're already in place. Do you understand that when you're in faith, when you sow seeds, when you walk in forgiveness, when you praise God, when you are mature, when you don't give place to the devil in your mind, when you honor your man of God, when you are loyal to your man of God, you serve your man of God, do you know that the presence and power of the Holy Spirit rests heavily upon you and angels begin to flock and multiply in your life? Do you know that you carry legions of angels? My God. My God. My God. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. It said, And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened up the eyes of his servant. He looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. All around Elisha. Oh my God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Precious Cheryl, Precious Cheryl, you've been with me for a while now. I love that you've been with me. You've been with me for a long time now. You've been with me for a long time now. You have seen so many things. You have seen the glory cloud fall. You have seen it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you have sown for such a long time. I'm telling you. You've had so many testimonies. I'm telling you, saints, it's powerful of what Jesus could do on the earth to connect people in your life. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Look what it says here. It says, He looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Bless you, precious Cheryl. He looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire. All around Elisha. Saints, this is so powerful. The Bible said that he saw angels all around Elisha. This just goes in line with what I've been teaching you. This is what I've been telling you. Remember, I've told you in Revelation and in wisdom, I've told you in Revelation and in wisdom of my teachings, I've told you that angels carry large amounts of, uh, uh, prophets carry large amounts of angels. Look at this text. It's saying that when the Lord opened up his eyes, he saw all these angels around Elisha. Now, here's the powerful thing about this. How did Elisha receive all of these angels? He received all of these angels because he served his man of God. He stood by his man of God. He honored his man of God. His man of God was his God. He did what the Lord wanted him to do towards his man of God. Here's what you need to see. Now we see Elisha, who was the servant to Elijah, now is the master prophet, 
He's the master in the prophetic now. And now his servant is seeing that his master, which is Elisha, who was a servant, is now surrounded by angels. They're all around him. He has an entourage of angels all around him. There's an entourage of angels surrounding him. There's an entourage of angels encamped around him. Now, you must remember that Elisha is being attacked by the Syrian army. So, whenever there are attacks on your life, there is an increase of angels that are moving with you everywhere you go. Are you catching this? It was the Syrian army that was attacking Elisha. Elisha's life is underneath attack. Why? Because he's carrying the double portion. When men carry the double portion, they get attacked by the Syrian army, which is a large, massive amount of evil spirits that are assigned to stop the move of God. They're assigned to stop the presence of God from filling the earth in manifestation. So Elisha is under the attack because of the double portion being on his life. This is what you need to know. Attacks actually validify who a man is. Some people say, how do I know if somebody's a man of God? Study. Why would Satan have to attack himself? What does Satan get out of attacking himself? Even Jesus said, Satan, don't go against Satan. A house divided against itself can't stand. What's the purpose of there being a hit out on a certain minister, a certain prophet, a certain apostle? Why is there a hit out on the person? Because they're carrying a double portion. And that double portion, it attracts an extra level of warfare. Some people want to be close to a man of God. For you to be close to a man of God, that means that you are going to be in the heat of battle. You can't be around a captain and a general and not learn how to be a soldier. If you're going to be around a general, you have to learn how to become a soldier. Saints, what are we here for? We are here to fight the good fight of faith and destroy the powers of the devil in our generation like Jesus did in his. First John chapter three, verse eight. For this purpose was the son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Remember, Jesus told us, he let us know that death was going to be his last enemy. So death is still running wild. Watch this. Jesus destroyed Satan's works. But not his spirits. I want you to see this. So the spirits of Satan are trying to reestablish the work, my God. So Jesus needs you 
to take on his same demeanor to the approach of destroying the kingdom of Satan. Because here's the thing. The spirits are trying to restore the work. The spirits are trying to get the work to come back into effectiveness. That's why you see homosexuality passed in our, our, our land. Isn't that what happened in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah? Wasn't there people that began to become homosexuals and lesbians and strange flesh and God destroyed it because of fire? This is why fire is hitting California. If you think that the fire in California is shocking, watch the fires that break out in places that are not known for fires. Watch how fires break out in places that are not known for fires. Because now God is judging the earth with fire, not with water. He did it with water the first time, which represent the word of God. Now fire, which represents the glory of God. And here's what you got to catch. When the glory of God is filling the earth, now he's dealing with people at a more intense level. It wasn't until the glory and the fire came that God killed Ananias and Sapphira in front of Peter. And the Bible said that the fear of God went throughout all the church. Now God is dealing with the earth in the realm of fire. This last war that's going to happen will be a fiery war, a nuclear war. Russia shall be destroyed. Jesus himself shall destroy Russia. Jesus shall come to this Marco Stetileosi Cantolomo. Jesus himself shall come to the earth. The slain of the Lord shall be many. That's why Isaiah 66 say, I believe. And the Lord shall begin to deal with the nations that opposed his people. The prophets shall end off tribulation. Moses and Elijah. They shall end off the finale. Before Jesus himself comes officially. See, Jesus uses the prophet always as his representative. Always. He always uses the prophet on the scene. That's how important a prophet is. He's going to send Elijah and Moses before he comes officially to judge everybody and kill everybody. The Bible says Elijah and Moses are going to go up. In three days, they're going to be dead and rise on the third day. That sounds just like Jesus. A prophet is Jesus in the flesh. A prophet is Jesus in the flesh. A prophet represents the fullness of Jesus coming to man to give man a chance to repent of their sin. Not the other way around. Not to tell the prophet to repent of his sin. He has no sin that God is calling him to repent of. He's been sent by God to get you to repent of your sin. Remember John the Baptist came full of the Holy Spirit from birth. And the Bible said that when he came, the Bible declared that he told them repent for the kingdom of heaven at hand. They couldn't go tell John the Baptist, repent. 
John the Baptist wasn't being called into repentance. He was being called to preach repentance. Wow, 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 wow. Saints, say, Jesus, take me over. Say, King Jesus, take me over. This is some powerful stuff that I'm talking about out here. This is some powerful stuff that I'm talking about here. Say, King Jesus, take me over. King Jesus, take me over. Mm, mm, mm. King Jesus, take me over. This is so powerful. 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 Ma carapa corra mande corre ma caranto se ne va. Rebe kiri ma caranto se ne mando. Rebe carra mando corre ma. said to you is the assignment for your life. God wants you to pay attention to that man of God. Heed his words. Stand by him. Follow him closely. Assist him. Make things easier on him. Block out any voice that will speak evil of him. Be a problem solver, not a problem maker. At page 11 of my book, Increasing Your Anointing as a Virtuous Woman. Look at page 11. It's over 250 plus pages. As a virtuous woman, you have grace to keep a man of God protected from Satan. As a virtuous woman, you have grace to keep a man of God protected from Satan. Your protector. You can add credibility to his words. You can be a helper in getting souls to hear his wisdom. You were created to be a part of the equation to bring others into the persuasion that Jesus is Lord. Carry your responsibility with grace, humility, and the fear of the Lord. Let your hands work that which is good and not evil. Let your hands work that which is good and not evil. Partner with the Holy Spirit for bringing peace to your man of God. And the woman that followed Jesus ministered to him. They made Jesus experience joy. Mary and the woman that followed Jesus ministered to him. They made Jesus experience joy.
You were created to be a part of the equation to bring others into the persuasion that Jesus is Lord.
Sorra Mandio. Mary ministered to Jesus. They caused Jesus to experience joy. They caused Jesus assignment to be easy. They brought Jesus inspiration. They protected Jesus. Jesus found comfort in them. As a woman of virtue, nature to bring comfort to your man of God. As a woman of virtue, you have an angelic nature to bring comfort. A virtuous woman has the ability to satisfy a man of God. A virtuous woman is a solution and answer to a man's issues. brought Jesus inspiration. They protected Jesus. Jesus found comfort in them. They caused Jesus assignment to be easy.
there's a strong anointing on him. Take it by force. The Lord is. 